Gary. Right on, right on. Right, come on in. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't even know his name. <laughs> Appreciate you having me, man. Yeah, of course. How you doing? Good. Nice. Well, maybe I should get Kenny the comfortable seat. I know, <laughs> man. You guys are going to be snuggle buddies. Yeah. Mm. Oh, man. You just coming back from work? Um, I work at home. So, yes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. you just get off? Yeah, I just got off. Well, I got off. I, I got... I got done around like 3.30, so. Oh, really? Thankfully, yeah. Sometimes Fridays can be really busy, and sometimes, you just never know, because it's, it's just the trucking industry. So, oh, really? Yeah. What do you do for them? Um, just a freight broker. Just oh, like, yeah, nice. Yeah. For, like, Armstrong? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, ever since the pandemic hit, I just worked from home, so. Oh, yeah, right on. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? Um, two and a half years. It'll be three years next June. Oh, really? Yeah. So have you landed any whales? Yeah, I'm, I do pretty good. So, well, it's not really, like, thankfully, my, uh, you know, my boss that trained me quit and just gave me most of the business. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, right when I got there, like, to the two people that were on my team, they just quit, and they just, I got all their business. No way. Yeah, so I really can't take too much credit. <laughs> oh, honest. that's bad. Yeah, it was just, it was, yeah, I was blessed, you know, I was like, I was like, okay, tight. Well, I like this job now, for sure. The first six months was rough, you know, because I'm just, like, making... 250 phone calls a week and just oh, like yeah, grinding, grinding. You know? and I was I was making and you were not a make... dialer you were on you were making calls well, I was making calls oh yeah 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 oh just, crikey yeah it was gnarly so but and I landed one good customer like I landed a few little ones one good one by myself and they started to trickle in and then I got like a business uh, development customer because. Like I was making enough phone calls and stuff, so like that was good. And then just everybody started quitting, and I was like, dude, tight. <laughs> Dang, man. That was cool, yeah. So you knew Sam, you know Sam Sisters? Yes. Bo Anshin? I don't know Bo. It sounds, I, I okay. think. Okay. So there's a first, well, the second floor and the third floor, and they're all on the thir uh, third floor oh. where Brandon works. And, again, I work at home now, so it's, it's way more chill for me. But. Do they, do people still go in? Yeah. Especially now, it's kind of wind down. Yeah, they, like, a lot of people like to go in. I'm like, why do you like to go in? Like, yeah. yeah. To me, I'm like, dude, I, I can just roll out of bed, Yeah. you know, post my loads really early, and then eat breakfast, you know. Oh, because you're not really calling anymore? You're more managing yeah. your clients? I still call, but if I'm slow, I'll call. Like, you're called to try to drum up new business, or you're calling just to maintain? Um, but, well, no, okay. I just, I mean... I don't really call it maintain too much because most of my customers just email me in the morning or I email them or whatever. Damn, if I yeah, if, yeah. I, if I haven't talked to them in a while, then I'll call them, see like, hey, what's up, you know, how's it going? But, um, you know, other than that, I try to, if I'm like, if I have enough time, I'll try to make like 10 cold calls a day just to like keep making steady new business because really? customers always fall off and stuff. Yeah. You know, so. Dang, man. What a cool, interesting industry. Yeah, thanks. What do you do? Uh, I, I own a crypto consulting company oh he was telling me about that yeah. so that's awesome but yeah, that's what i i was in the phone i owned a telemarketing company forever we sold how to make money on the internet mm. amazon ebay stuff wow. like that good for you yeah that's awesome that, but so i know all about the grind yeah oh crikey yeah. i'm so glad i don't have to do that anymore <laughs> yeah it's rough oh. i i did like three months of insurance right before that and i was just getting oh, licensed really? and stuff yeah and i was yeah. on the phones on that was like that's on a computer, just like hundreds of phone calls a day. Yeah. And that was, and people just get upset at you. But yes. the trucking industry, at least they like, you know, they need. Right. You yeah. Know. I was cold, freezing cold, convincing people to give me 20 grand on a credit card oh. to start an eBay business. So oh, it was like, wow. oh, you had to be persuasive, you know? Wow. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, at least in trucking, like it's, you need freight brokering, like you need what I have to offer. Yes. So, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's cool, man. What did you do before? Uh, well, did the insurance for three months, that doesn't really count, so it's only three months, yeah. but I DJed downtown for like eight years. Okay, that's yeah. where I've met you before. You had long uh, hair. Yes, I did. I nice. Guess, for, for like half of it. And then before that, I was in the Marine Corps for four years, right after high school. So. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, what'd you do in the Marines? I was a scout sniper. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, I was a machine gunner, and then I went to sniper school and became a scout sniper, so. Oh, Fucking hurry up, Ken. <laughs> Fuck, dude. This is fucking... Here we go. Nice. What up, Ken? Dude, we were just getting into some good stuff. Glad What's up, you man? Good up. to see you. 
Oh, oh, nice jacket. I'm gonna go grab my water, is that alright? Of course. Alright, I just need a little. Let's lips. Oh, dude, looking fucking fly, bro. Oh, dang. Uh, how you doing, bro? Dude, I'm doing great. Doing real good. Okay, man, you are just a cunt hair away from that tripod. So just be, try to be mindful. Oh, dang, alright. Um, so we don't bump that. Dude, what is that coat, man? That thing is fucking titties! <laughs> oh, I guess, Sam, I gotta get you guys mic'd up. Here was a solution I came up with. So just put it in a pocket. Oh my god, I found solutions. I knew there was something. Yeah, dude, something like this will be. I mean, we got, we're covering all the bases. So you guys will have this mic plus your mic'd up now. So let me scoop find it. Not right, man. Here we go. Okay, man, you're barely in the frame. Yeah. You guys have to share that mic, remember? Yeah, yeah. So we'll figure it out. Because also, this oh, is yeah. your guys' main camera. This one. Okay. This one gets the whole room. This one just in the way. The automatically locks for the room. Keep on knocking, but you can't come in. <laughs> Sorry, it automatically locks. No, that's all right. I gotta get, let me mic you up that's too. That's convenient. Hey, let me take my jacket off. We're gonna be cozy. Solutions. All right. All right, so good. Dude, I had <laughs> crazy day today. Really? Yeah. I went to this like Pull up more. meth house. Talk. What? All right, yeah. hold on, dude. You guys got some good shit going on. All right, you're good. So I don't need to speak in the mic then? You, I'm covering everything. Covering everything. Okay, all the, all the oh, stops. Let me... it, was funny. it was funny cause uh, Kate was like, so do you guys like script this thing? I'm like, absolutely not. That's what makes it so great. I feel yeah, like. We're just driving. Yeah, we're just driving. Here we fucking go. Right on. Yeah. And then, uh, do you guys want one of these waters too? I'll take one. Dude. Yeah, nice. Dude, I'm uh, glad you guys found some caffeine. Get some and we've met once before. Oh, okay. I remember. It was just once. But when he was DJ and had long hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. If I drink that, I'm going to stay up all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll drink yours too. <laughs> Right, test, test, test. Let's Check hear, one, two, let's three. Hear with you guys. Oh, because you guys are. Check one, two, three. We got to put it somewhere. Oh, Check one, Christ. two, three. Check one, two, mm. three. I mean, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. I'll just see how it works throughout this whole thing. All right, ma'am. So I'm glad because, man, right before you came in, yeah. Kalen was talking about being a fucking sniper. Yeah. Dude. So sick. Yeah. yeah. So machine gunner. Yeah. Then a sniper. Yeah. It's what, what, man, what kind of experience was that, man? Um, it was pretty crazy. It's definitely the hardest, you know, physically and mentally that I, you know, process that I've ever gone through. You know. Oh, I'm sure. sure. Um, I never saw any combat or anything, so it wasn't. Uh, I went on two MUs. It's a Marine Expeditionary Unit, so it's it's uh, it's like two boat trips basically. So it was all around. I went to. I did go to the Middle East and stuff. I was in combat zone, but yeah. So just, I mean. It was a it was a crazy journey, you know. Um, I a lot of my friends that were in uh, my sniper platoon extended for a year, and then they went um, then they went to Afghanistan, and it was pretty that was pretty gnarly. Like they have a they have a documentary about their deployment and everything, and so and I had just, I had gotten in a little bit of trouble, like in, in the service or outside of it. In the service, I had like a drinking incident thing, and and so. 
I got in trouble and I got kicked out of the sniper platoon. I was still a sniper. Cause I oh, really? Get, yeah. And so I was a little um, burnt. And so I didn't want to extend with all my friends, you know? Yeah. But then, you know, if I'd have known probably that they'd seen that much action, I probably would have. But, you know, it just wasn't in the cards. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So. Dang, man. Awesome. That's wild. Yeah. I, I mean, what even prompted you? Did you have family that went to the military or anything? Um, or? Yeah. My... Both my grandparents were, and uh, or my gra- both my grandpas on so my mom and my dad's side, and my dad was in the army as well. So you know, I always just wanted, I always wanted to do something like that. You know, I was dressed up as an army kid, and you know what I mean. Yeah, playing guns and stuff when I was little and all that. So I was just, I left eight days after high school for boot camp. Oh no way. Dude, yeah. eight days after high school, gradu- well, supposed to graduate. I mean, I was having gang bangs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, man, that's wild. Yeah. Wild. So, I mean, what do you think about what's going on right now? Um, or, you, like, how's your journey changed? So, how long ago was that? I got out in 2011. So, it was quite a while ago. Now. Ten years. Yeah, a decade. Ten, ten, yeah, how ten has years. your, like, mindset and your viewpoint on everything shifted in ten years? Well, you know, I think it kind of boomeranged because it kind of went so far to one direction. Like, why are we even over there? This, that sort of thing. Because the, the, the vision wasn't so clear to me. You know, um, why am I even doing this? And that's why I didn't extend. Because I was like, my heart's not really in it anymore. Like, I've been doing this. I'm kind of burnt out, dropped my pack, and whatnot. Um, as we Marines would say. Got in trouble. And so I was just like... The vision wasn't there anymore, but as time goes on, I think just the warrior spirit and warriors of all cultures have are inspiring in general. And so I think that you know, just being a warrior, uh, period, is honorable. Of course, really, no matter what side you're on. You know, obviously, there, I believe there's a right and wrong side to be on, but and I think even having honor for those you're fighting against sort of thing you know so that i've always admired and that's why i've always admired like samurais and you know all that sort of thing. oh yeah man i'm big into samurais and stuff yeah and honor and integrity yeah so do you think like to that point of like the warrior spirit do you think that the ideals the ideals for war nowadays are different in your opinion than when you first enlisted 10 years ago like, do you see through the veil of, like, propaganda or any of that? You know what I'm saying? Like, do you still... It's just weird, like, to think, like, to defend mean, doesn't mean you have to go somewhere. Yeah. Like, we were invading, in my opinion. You yeah. know, like, to me, like, the Americas killed more people in the Middle East than Middle Easterns ever have killed in America. Yeah. So it's just interesting how they would make you think that, hey, we have to go over here and kill all these people mm. to make sure you're safe. Sure. Isn't that sound kind of backwards? It, you know, it does. And it's, and it's nuanced, of course, and it's a little murky, and I don't have the answers for that for sure. But I think that, you know, and I can see both sides of the argument, but us trying to be the policemen of the world you know, every empire fails, and I think that's what we're seeing right now. It's oh, our really? empire failing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and just because when we spread too thin, and then we demoralize in more ways than one, in our national pride, and we have no moral objective values anymore. Right. Only people only believe in power, and so they're not interested in doing the right thing. They're just interested in become being in power. Because once they're in power, then they'll do the right thing. Do you th- do you thing. mean like people like in politics or just most all people in general? Yeah. So like, let's just say like this weird ass social media culture of clout. Let's call it. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's a kind of a form of power. Mm-hmm. Is it power influence over other people? Because like on the internet, we're always putting out our best filter essentially a filter so that people will see us in a filtered light. Mm. So it is about influence. That is another sort of power, you know? 
one thing uh, I would like to point out too is this is the first time ever in history where if somebody's doing something wrong and like a warrior type person protects somebody weaker than them, they could potentially go to jail or get in trouble. And that's kind of a scary thing in itself. Cause like you have a, a whole mm. uh, bunch of people running around doing whatever they want. And the only person that can protect them is a jailer or a policeman. Whereas there's ton of, you know, warrior type guys out there in our, in where we're at, but they're afraid to do anything really because, you know, there's a backlash of jail or, you know, the saying, if you throw, you go, you know, there's just throw so, what? like throw a punch, you know, you go to jail. Even in like, if it's total, yeah, self-defense, like you have to prove well, you your innocence. You have to prove your innocence. Even if the other person's like, yeah, that guy was trying right. to rape me. You have to prove that you were innocent on whatever you did to this person. Yeah, it's a weird ass place we're living in. The, get, the matrix is weird. Yeah, the, uh, um, it makes me think that, you know, progress right we think we've progressed so far but you know we're not as barbaric or whatever somebody in the you know in 1200 1200 or whatever but they would look at us as like these us lazy pathetic zero courage whoa you know and so it, it's we may have gotten better in some things but in some things, we've gotten so much worse. Damn, that's a killer point. That's incredible. Yeah, we have regressed. Yes, and that's why, like, my because I'm big into like evolution, and the, and I'm like, this is a fucking simulation. Like, it is a video game. Like, this is the most advanced virtual reality that we think that it's not. Yeah. And what's happening? Like, have you guys ever seen the movie Westworld? Yeah. Or the show Westworld? No. So it's kind of based a simulation and it's based in like the wild, wild west. Well, what happens is some of the characters in the game start waking up and realizing, oh, I'm in a simulation. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is that as the storyline goes in like season two, three, whatever, the, the, the game itself starts to evolve now evolving out of the wild west. And then some of those people actually get out of the game. So that's what I see happening is we're literally evolving from one consciousness to another. And so what we're watching right now is are the pillars that our culture is built upon politics, money, religion, sex, those pillars are crumbling and a new one's emerging like there is one emerging but let's look at like a plant like you've got this old dead decrepit plant that's kind of dying but then there's one that's like it's it has sprouted but it's not fully grown it's not producing fruit it is producing some fruit so like these it's we're in the middle of this transition like this is fucking natural selection like people who are giving away people who are like dramatically regressing like not taking personal responsibility not like man it's weird like i i don't understand people that like don't want to be free they don't want to like think for themselves like that's weird i, I don't know if you guys saw but uh the Biden administration or whatever is wanting to give uh, Hispanic families that were separated during the Trump administration four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, right? Each. And so, yeah, and yeah. So nice. these, this is being posted everywhere, right? On the interweb. Yeah, and if you look at all the comments, all of the people underneath that are like, "Hey, where's my money? I, you know, haven't been able to see my family during COVID and blah blah blah." And it's just everybody instead of just saying like whatever right they're they're asking where's my money at where's this at why well, deserve this you know and Dang. it's like no you nobody deserves any of that the other people that got separated from their families they don't deserve four hundred and fifty thousand dollars because they came from nothing but they have an opportunity to come here now and find a good job you know and make more money and provide better for their family um, but no one's looking at it like that, right? Everyone's like, we should give them this. And then there's some people who are like, I want, I want what they're too, doing. right? Yeah. Well, that, again, those pillars, like, because it's all interwoven. Like, politics is interwoven with money, and our money system is built on a sham. It is the pyramid scheme. Like, printing money, having an unlimited printing press to just print money, mathematically, 
that is destined to fail. Like you can't just print trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars and ever expect them to maintain value. Like it's going to lose value and ultimately it will crash. It's 100% mathematically certain, but that's also tied into politics. So you have the, it's like, what I see now is it's that old saying, you know, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Like, in my opinion, all the people in the highest level of politics are the biggest, scummiest people on the planet. Because even to want to be in that position, to have to be a professional liar and cheater and corrupt and backdoor deals and all this type of stuff, you have to be a scumbag. And so like they come from that old consciousness and their, their only power is the power to try to control through propaganda. And now that people are waking up because of the internet, like we have access to all this information, infinite intelligence, and they don't have control of that. Like they've lost control of information. And so people are waking up. And so now all of their lies have to be bigger than the last lie they told. Like COVID one, now COVID two, the Delta sequel has to be bigger and scarier than the first one. Because the people that didn't get scared by COVID one, we got to try to scare them with COVID two. COVID two doesn't work. We got to work with well, COVID yeah, three. Well, yeah, now they're they're already talking about a COVID three, right? I oh, can't really? What the new variants called, but yeah, there's are they're already talking about a third variant. Oh, that's freaking. I mean, so again, like it's, and I don't know. Like my life has been so weird, and I've done I've eaten a lot of mushrooms. I drank a lot of <laughs> ayahuasca, like to see this stuff that like it's a game and we're waking up and some people are waking up to realize this is a simulation this is a game and when you say simulation what do you mean like what do you like you think we're like in a like a video game or like what do you mean like, it's a holographic projection of your consciousness like so where did our con <clears throat> consciousness come from i don't know I mean, I've had experiences like with under in ayahuasca ketamine mushrooms where like you kind of go into the infrastructure of the game. It's almost like if you put Mario Brothers in the Nintendo, like there's levels to it. There's the level you see on the TV, but then there's stuff going on inside the game. When you eat the the, the medicine, you kind of get to see the, behind the matrix, the zeros and ones, you know. Where the origin of our consciousness resides, though, I don't know that. But what I see... Is let, let's say like 50 years from now, 50 to 100 years from now, the things that we will develop as a, as a species will get us there. Like once we can upload our consciousness to a cloud, then we will, that at some point we're going to self-realize. It's going to create, it's, it's going to, it's a cycle. Just like in a computer program, at some point we will realize, we will, the people that survive will realize, oh, I'm living in a game. Once we get to that realization, there's other levels or dimensions that we can't even understand yet. Just like if we went back to 1200 AD and you told someone, hey, uh, there's going to be this thing in 800 years that you can carry around in your pocket and you can go. They'd be like, this motherfucker is a witch. We got to burn this motherfucker. Yeah. So you just extrapolate into the future where we're already going like there's already people like elon musk talking about we're living in a simulation he's already talking about building things like Neuralink to upload your consciousness so to me it's like i had these visions you know back in 2006 and now like as i've just lived my life like i've had these experience where like i've been confirmed like dude this is a video game like this reality it's always speaking to you in symbols. I think that um, my, uh, I would argue, well, so my interpretation of that is like in the Bible, it says the unseen is more real than what is seen. Yes. And that's kind of what, um, what I think about that, I guess, as far as technology. And again, like the progression, like we think we're progressing so far. Like in the Bible, it talks about the Tower of Babel. And they just found like archaeological evidence of it really existing. So like, oh, we thought it was just story, whatever. But besides it really existing, there's like a deeper meaning to it as far as 
they thought they could build a tower to God, basically make a utopia that they didn't need God, that they didn't, they could, they were self-sufficient. They thought they were so far progressed that they were puffed up in pride. And then it said God confounded their language so they couldn't understand what they were saying. I kind of see technology as the, in that light, like, yes, we, we can, you know, send a message and it's in China and just like that. But look at look at all the confusion that's going on. You know we're so far progressed, but then nobody knows what we're talking about. People are still we're still on the edge of war all the time. You know what I mean? I think in every society at the peak of every empire, just like with the Soviets, you know they thought they could make a, a utopia. Look what happened to them. Mao thought he could make a utopia. You know he killed two hundred million people trying to do it. Uh, same with Hitler. You know different things. Whenever we try to do that. Without God, we're always progressing in the wrong direction. That's what I would argue. I see what you're saying. Like we've advanced technology, we've advanced materialistically, but morally and ethically, we haven't evolved to catch up. So I think that like what's going on right now, like when I'm talking the the crumbling of these pillars, like from what I've seen, like there's going to be a period of darkness. Mm. And in that period of darkness, we're going to learn some very valuable lessons that we have not been willing to learn. Yeah. Like unconditional love, like forgiveness, like compassion, understanding, yeah. acceptance. Like we're going to be, we're all of our toys are going to be taken away from us. And we're going to learn like, Hey, in order for that, the second coming to happen, to me, like the second coming is like, in order for us to get to that golden age, like we have to learn those lessons. Like we have to advance spiritually over anything. So for me, it's like, I'm with you. Like at some point we, we will let go of our attachment to materialistic things, but only through learning lessons the, the like you, like, I think we both agree with, like we need morals and ethics. Like people, it just, it, they've, just like you're talking, like all these, the, you know, uh, the Tower of Babel, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, like all these people, like, I think that those empires crumbled and the people who weren't willing to learn the lessons perished with it. But the, the righteous that were willing to let go of their evil ways and to learn the lessons and to advance to the next level. the Because ne obviously we're not living like the people that were living in those times, right? So our, the entire game has evolved from that level. And so it, it, with every level, in order for you to go to the next level, you have to learn certain lessons. So that's what I see. Like the level we're playing on now is crumbling. And when it really, shit really hits the fan, like that's when, man, the lessons are going to be, the skeletons are going to come out of the closet, you know, that you have to deal with. My thing, so I would think that, so there's obviously, we agree there's a problem with humanity, right? And I see that problem as we're, we're all fallen, like we we fell and we can't and we're desperately trying to find that righteousness to get to that next level to get to that and i would say that it's impossible for one to be righteous it's there's only one person who was righteous and that was jesus and if we put our faith i put my faith in him and through his righteousness i'm made clean that's what i think um you know and I mean, shoot, you know, I was, it took me a long time to, like, I grew up as a Christian, right? But I, I you know, I, I said the sinner's prayer, so you accept Jesus into your heart when you're four years old because of my mom, you know, she's a, a good Christian lady, but she was like crazy. Ken knows, she was crazy. And she's in a, she's in a home now. Cause she was, she had dementia and she was always been, her mental, her mental health was not good. You know, growing up, so that was we come. We had a dysfunctional, broken family. My dad abused me sexually and physically uh, when I was little, and growing up with that, like I stuffed it down because it's yeah. embarrassing, you know. And 
um, and you don't know what to do with that, that sort of thing, you know, started using a lot of drugs and, and drinking in high school and then in the Marine Corps, um, I told you a little bit about that already, um, but in that drinking incident when I was in the Marine Corps, they sent me to rehab um, shortly after that. that. That was kind of my, my, own cho- my own choosing. I actually had my own experience. It was on, it was on MDMA and, and I, I was totally, you know, I got baptized in high school, totally not, didn't even think about God during the Marine Corps. It was just like drinking all the time, blacking out, sleeping around, you know, just living, living my best life, you know, <laughs> or worst life, whatever you want to call it. But, and then, um, I was at a rave and I was just looking up in the lights. I was rolling, you know, my balls off and I was, and I, you know, looking up in the lights, listening to music. And I was just like, Oh wow, this is so beautiful. And I was just like, had a thought like, if this is this beautiful, if, if these colors can be this vibrant and music can sound this good, like there has to be a God, you know? And it was more of a thought. It was like, okay, once that happened, I was like, it kind of something changed in me and it desired instead of that superficial feeling I was getting from drugs, I desired like a real connection with whoever made us, whoever put us here, you know? And then I went to rehab and, you know, got out and I was living a clean life and good. And then I, you know, started DJing and I got the a girl that worked there pregnant the first two weeks I was working there. And <laughs> then I tried to do the right thing and, and marry her. And, um, we had a beautiful boy, but it, she was, you know, bipolar and it was, it was a disaster. We was over before it started, got divorced. The year I got divorced, I found out my mom ha- did have dementia and all those things. And obviously I didn't talk to my dad and bitterness was still there sort of in that deal. But my, um, um, I was just like completely alone for a long time. Like, well, thank God for Ken because he let me live with him. I had nowhere to go. Uh, but as far as just I had no, you know, no parents to talk to, uh, no significant other, whatever. It's just for a long time, I just felt completely alone, you know, mm-hmm. and I tried to fill that loneliness with, you know, drinking. I was, I wasn't drinking like I was not an alcoholic, but it was just, you know, and sleeping around and it never filled me up, you know? And then I was going to church with my mom on Wednesdays because she was about to have to go to a home. So I, you know, I knew I wanted to go to church there the last few times. And this pastor in Calvary Chapel Meridian um, asked if anybody needed prayer afterwards. And so I was like, oh, I could use some prayer. You know, I don't know why, but I was like, uh, I never got prayer from anybody like that. So I just went up and I got some prayer from him and he was saying these things. And he was like, he said, he was like, it said in the word to not be filled with or to not be drunk off wine, but to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I was like, that was weird. Why did he say that? Like, I know my mom didn't tell him I went to rehab when I was 21 or anything right. like that. It was like, cause she was already crazy by that time. And the next night I got blackout drunk and there was a, there was a fight in, in a club. Ken, Ken and I were there and my head got smashed into the wall and it changed my whole life. Cause I had to stop DJing cause I would get, migraines all the time and and I would pray all the time and be like God take this pain away like I couldn't exercise couldn't do that all that stuff but then <clears throat> you know <clears throat> he <laughs> I remember I was taking a bath and I was just like anything get away from this pain of this this migraine that was just taking over my whole life you know it was just and I was in such pain I was just like God just help me like you know this this is terrible and in that moment, he didn't take away the pain, but I just felt like his presence like come over me and I had peace like I've never felt it before. It was more than that time that I was rolling or more than, you know, the, the, it, was, it was completely sober and I was just like, okay. And over time, instead of healing my head, he healed my heart, and what the, which is what I really need. And uh, C.S. Lewis says like, it, 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 you know, if if you got rats in the basement, he's got to turn out the lights and the, the rats will come out and then you turn on the lights. See, he's got to get rid of the rats in the right. basement, you know, that sort of thing. So anyways, um, I just think that 
and through all that, God showed me that, and through my bitterness that I had against my dad, you know, he gave me the grace to forgive him. He gave me the grace uh, to forgive everything that I'd done in my life, you know, and I'm still working it out. But, <laughs> you know, that's like working out like those resentments and stuff or no, just still. I mean, I'm not perfect is what I'm trying to say. Just like, oh, yeah. Of course, you know, working through different things. But mm-hmm. like, I, I just think that through all these things, like God has shown me, you know, who he really is. Like, you know, they say to encounter beauties, to encounter the divine. And I just feel like that's what happened to me. And, and so I think all of our problems and all of our efforts to raise ourselves up, because like you said, there, there's an indefinite problem. And I don't think that we have the power in ourselves to fix our own problems. And because I think that, you know, the, that God created us, so we're the created, and we fell, and then he sent Jesus here to bridge the gap between us and him again, you know, so then that's his plan of, of redemption for us. What do you think is the purpose of life? If we can't fix ourselves, if we can't fix our problems, what do you think is the purpose of all this? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I think that God wanted a family, and I think that in order to have a family... But a family that he couldn't experience with? Oh, he's definitely, I mean, it, you know, God's omnipresent. It, I don't think that God is is everything, but God sees everything. It's just like you know, I have a son, you know, I feel like once I had a son, I realized, oh, wow, this is worth it. Cause life just seemed to me like one suffering after another, like you have moments of joy, but then, you know, most of it was just pain all the time. So I'm like, what's the point? But then I had a son and I was like, oh my gosh, this is why he created us. The juice must be worth the squeeze, you know? And once, uh, once the director walks onto the stage, the play's over. And I think we're, it, this is the play, you know, this is the test. This is, what's and, the purpose of the test, do you think? Um, ultimately, I think everybody, everyone in their own way will have a choice whether to accept his creator or walk away from him. You and mean it's God? their choice, yeah. So the whole purpose of life is to ultimately choose, choose to believe in God or not. Yes. Makes All sense. right. Yeah. To make it to this Mecca or this heaven that we all want to get to. I don't think, you know, and people are like, well, how could you, how could all these people that never believed in God, what, did, what happened to them? They all went to hell or whatever. And I don't think, you know, hell's lock, hell's doors are locked from the inside. So we make our own hell. Like going to heaven, accepting God, going back to our creator is being fully human you know it says in the bible that we're like a seed compared to like an oak tree of what will be in heaven to go to hell would just to be to choose to be away from him whatever that means and we would be less we would be whatever remains so god lives in heaven god lives because we go to heaven after we die so you're saying god wants a family that's why he made us physical beings. But then when we die, we become non-physical beings and we live in a place called heaven. Well, and but God's still not in that heaven. It, it might be. It might be. We don't know what we become. Right. Like it, even in the Bible, it says we don't like you. You can't compute what what we're going to go through. Right. So I don't think that your guys' beliefs are, are far off from each other because like this might be a simulation basically, right? And then once we pass this test or, you know what I mean? Whatever it is we have to go through to accept him. If we go to that next level, um, you know, we don't, we, we, don't, we don't know what is in store. You know, all we know is it's going to be greater than what we're going through now. Oh, I'm not saying, I mean, I would yeah. say we do believe in a lot of the same things. Like I believe sure. in a higher power. 
Like, I wouldn't necessarily define it the same as a Christian, but I definitely believe in a higher, omnipresent, omnipotent being or presence, force, whatever you call it. I don't know. I think to even try to define God as a person is missing the mark. So I don't know. I would never say I don't know, but I would also never tell someone they're wrong, especially when you can't prove what you believe. Like you can't prove anything in any of those books, really. You can't prove anything without a shadow of a doubt. Well, I mean, we have good reasons, though. But that's not proof. That wouldn't stand up in a court of law. Sure. I mean, I mean, like the guy who wrote The Case for Christ, you know, he did 300 hours of study on Jesus. And basically, he. But he that's wanted... not proof. No, but, well, it's, I mean, but it's, it's good reasons for it. But reason doesn't stand up in court. Yeah, but really, who gave those people rule over us to stand up? Who chooses those laws to stand up? And I'm just saying, yeah. I, I'm just saying, like, for me, I couldn't personally, I've had my own experiences that I can never take back. Like, I, I'm not the type, like, when I talk about mushrooms and I, I don't do it for fun. Like, it's, I fucking hate it, actually. But that's why it's called a sacrament. You have to make a sacrifice. So I'm sacrificing myself to go and connect with God. Like I've had, I could tell you I've met God and that's my belief. I have met God, but I can't prove it to you. Just like you can't necessarily prove your beliefs to me. So I've had these experiences just like you've had experiences. My experience have shown me something I could never take back. And those experiences have been reconfirmed to me over and over and over again that it is true what you saw and you experienced and what you continue to experience through it is true. And so for me, it's like, hey, if if some dude comes flying out of the sky on a silver surfboard, I will be the first one at his feet. How, saying, would, you, how would you know it wasn't a simulation, though? I wouldn't. I would just say, like, hey, if there was something that was beyond a shadow of a doubt. But, like, so... Like, do you believe that Jesus Christ is going to come back as a physical person? Yeah, I think I, and I think that he rose from the dead, and I think there's good reasons to believe that. I think there's... I, but there's no proof to believe. To There's no proof. I've studied it. There's no proof that he rose from the grave. So, his... 12 disciples that were that were written way after the fact all those books there's no writings in the time span of Jesus that's not true oh, for, first all right. Corinthians first uh, second Corinthians uh, 15 one it's the earliest um, creed that we have and it was written three to ten years and it's, it talks about Jesus dying and rising again mm-hmm. and when 500 and 500 brothers saw him you know walk his 12 disciples, you know, who who were running in fear after he was crucified because they thought they were going to be killed too. So it's then, a sheer jacket. Then, th- then three days later when they saw him rose again, they were shouting from the rooftops and all of them were martyred for their faith. Paul, who persecuted Christians, who killed Christians um, because he was Jewish, he said he met Jesus on the road to Damascus and he it changed his life and then he was martyred for the faith. He was the Paul St. Paul was the reason why Christianity was all over the world after that cuz he went everywhere to preach and his head was chopped off by the Romans for believing in that. You know, and there's just time and time again where those things happen. But and, I wasn't there. Right, for and sure. So I can't believe a story that's been retranslated countless times like the the king james bible was written in 1604 so 1600 years after the fact it's all hearsay so so i'm not saying that you're wrong and i'm not saying that it's wrong i'm just saying i can't base all of my faith on hearsay right so the so the, all the different translations that we have were were translated from the original uh scripts that they had, and then when we found the Dead Sea Scrolls, it dated them back, all the way back to the very beginning. I mean, at the end, they they said we the can't prove thing. that. I mean, it's good enough evidence for me. I you mean, know? I've I've seen videos in the last few months that would totally disprove that, but I can't. I'm not going to pull them up right here, so it's kind of futile. And I the last I I, I don't. At the end of the day, and like I never want to argue with someone, especially no, sure. over something like this, like. 
again, well, like that's why I would, I would never tell someone they're wrong. Yeah. I'm just saying from what I've gathered, like there's not enough proof, physical proof. But if Jesus Christ came back as a physical being and did fucking magic tricks or actual uh, uh, miracles, I'm talking real miracles, then I'd be like, oh, yeah, dude, I'll follow you till the end. Well, but he, until that happens, I'm not holding my breath. Sure. No, When he, he, here's what I would say to that, too. It's like, I would agree because there's there, there's so many different arguments for different things that can sound convincing either way. But I do think God can be known and experienced. And I think maybe, and, yeah, and, I, and I don't deny your own experiences. And I think when we truly seek God earnestly in the truth, humbly, he's going to reveal himself. And I believe I've seen him just you. like earnestly and humbly. I have seen what you, I've, I've sure. experienced exactly what you're talking and about. And I don't, you know, I, I don't deny it. I wouldn't, you know, I mean, like with mushrooms or whatever, like I'm not, I'm not going to deny it. Cause like I said, I had my own experience and I, and I, and I think it was a catalyst for me. Um, personally now I would think, I don't need that because I think it's it's like God's a person I can just talk to him I don't have to like I don't have to meditate and say om um, over and over to like connect with Brahman or whatever you know like I, I would put that in the same in the same thing I just wouldn't need it and I would say the experience that I had um, originally on MDMA I think I've had so many more impactful experiences when I wasn't on anything you know I'm right. I mean? I'm with you. So yeah. yeah, and so it's not. Yeah. And that's where my journey's taken me too. Is like I'm I'm totally sober, for the most part. Like the last time I drank was with you. You know, like I don't the same for the same thing. Is like now my path has taken me to the point where it's like, hey, in order to get to the to in order to connect with God at an even deeper level, it's about renunciation. Like seeing what are my addictions and letting them go more and more and overcoming those those kind of gnats, you know, so that I can connect even deeper. You know what um, I will say, though, is seeing real evil, right, will make a believer of God out of anybody. Because, I mean, I sold door to door for four years and some of the craziest shit that like a human can possibly see, right? Like I've seen possession. Um, I <clears throat> don't know if he was possessed or a witch. But I've also seen, you know, I don't know if he did voodoo or what when I was in Pagedale. Um, I saw this guy. Where's Pagedale? Uh, in Missouri. So it's like right across the street from the Del Mar Loop. Um, but I knocked on this guy's door. And I remember, um, you know, again, I was pretty young. I, what, I was a Christian, right? But I wasn't a true believer, right? And then I remember I knocked on this guy's door and... <clears throat> When I knocked on his door, uh, he answered the door and his eyes, there was no pupil. Like there was no like color to it, right? It was all white. And he had like a half jerry curl. So it was like a skullet on top and then greasy like curly hair in the back. And he had like an inch and a half fingernails. Well, I was, wow. you know, like 21 years old and I'm like, this old man's not going to be able to beat my ass, you know, like. I'm not, if this guy wants to buy something from me, I'll sell it to him, you know? Yeah. Um, so he's like, why don't you come on in or whatever? And I went to walk in and it was like a wall of humidity blocked me from going inside of his house. And I like, I remember trying to walk into his house like four or five times. And then it finally hit me like, this is something supernatural is trying to stop me from going in maybe i should listen to him. Uh, I'm, and I literally well i might be getting no we'll I see just turned and no. if yeah. i don't though then i'd love to come uh, yeah. but if i do have him i'm gonna because i haven't spent a halloween with him in like three years oh wow yeah, so well, we're gonna be Power Rangers. Like he, he heard me was like, Daniel. I need to see God, right? I oh, nice. Yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't see the face right now, but yeah. <laughs> I definitely know the one. name. <laughs> yeah, she's got one. <laughs> um, I didn't see any physical being, right? But I did get this feeling of just like pure love. You know what I mean? Like just so much love and so much. I like, you know, started crying and like I still get shivers to this day because it was the best feeling I've ever had. You know, like you could take whatever drugs you want or you could take whatever uh, or whatever 
tight sexual experience you want, but nothing felt as good as God's love, you know? Um, and that was, you know, my true testament, my experience, you know? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, I believe that stuff happens all the time. And there are people out there, like you said, like that they're, I mean, there's no better word than, yeah, just evil, you know, that are yeah. just possessed by e evil energy, whatever, spirits. I don't know. And then there's some people that practice some weird demonic type of stuff out there. It's freaking loco, for well, sure. I mean, it's not type of stuff. It's demonic stuff, right? Like, yeah, the Church of Satan. Uh, I uh, heard from a, a friend of mine that uh, he was playing football with some guy. And he just said one day he came flying in and was like, I did a, a prayer to a demon to make me better at sports. And he's like, I basically, you know, signed on dotted line. Uh, and he's like... I'm playing D1 football, and he's like, the devil just came and said he's here for my soul. He's like, I don't know what to do. And what? Yeah, the guy just fell off after that, you know? Like, he said he, he hasn't heard from him, seen him since. So, you know, like, those prayers, those types of things, I think they do exist. And, you know, you hear all these things about the famous people that drink baby blood and, you know, like, do all of these things. I don't necessarily think that all of that's untrue, right? Yeah. Like. Um, and I also don't think that selling your soul to the devil necessarily means signing on a dotted line. Uh, I think that like if I, I'm in construction, I could go to every construction company in town and break people's legs and, right. you know, force them not to work in this area and then be the only construction com company in town. Right. But it's not the right thing to do. Right. Um, once you cross that line, right. how do you get back to the other side? Because, People start seeing that income increase, you know, more beautiful women, faster That's the cars. Gotcha. That's the hook, right? And once you get that hook and it's done the wrong way, I just, I don't, I don't know how you get back from that, right? Like, and I don't know, I'm sure there are people out there that have testimonies. I mean, repent, and, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, a hundred, repentance, man. I mean, sometimes you got to hit rock bottom to repent, to truly repent. Yeah. Say, man, I'm sorry for the way I was living. Like, I am not doing that anymore, <laughs> you know? And to truly, what are they, like, um, when you go to someone and you ask for forgiveness, what do they call that? I think it's like in the 12th. Amends. Amends, amends. yeah, making amends. And like when you, because I'm telling you, have you guys ever made amends? Dude, it's hard. It is. It's so hard to go some to someone that you've wronged and say, I'm sorry. What do I need to do? Like, how do we rebuild this? Like, it is fucking hard. Like, you're just shitting in your pants. Like, but but that's part of the that's part of the thing. That's what I'm talking about. Like the these lessons that we have to learn, like, and that we're so distracted and we're so pulled by the material world, like whether it be like just I don't know. There's a million things, money, sex, drinking, overeating, whatever it is. There are all these things that are pulling at us. And so that we can get away from not doing the work that I think we came here to do. Like we're spiritual beings and we're having this experience to learn these lessons. The only way, I mean, you learn, you have to, how can you be, how can you even become close to righteous without learning forgiveness? without ex having an experience where you have to ask for forgiveness or be forgiving. Like, like why? Like to me, like that's why I asked, like what, what would be the purpose of life then? It's like, like what is the, would be the point of it other than to learn these lessons that we like, that we just seem to not be learning. Like that's the moral problem is even from the beginning, like of our conversation saying, to me it's weird that like, we can justify as Americans, it's okay for us to go into another person's land and kill innocent people in the name of freedom, in the name of just a story that was told to us on the TV. Like I, I have, there's no real proof that those people crashed in those towers that started the whole thing. There's no real proof. I haven't seen anything good. But that caused, uh, that's okay, that justified going, killing babies, killing women, killing innocent people. Like, to me, that's crazy. Well, even if it was true, I mean, they, they offered us Bin Laden or something like that in, like, 2000, 
I don't know, I can't remember, years ago. But then we were like, oh, we don't negotiate with terrorists. We'll just stay there for another 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> it so was, uh, there's got to be some underlying rigmarole going on, you well, know? And I think people are waking up to that period, right? Like, we just got told that aliens are real. And no one's freaking out about it. Yeah, no one even cares. <laughs> like, maybe if a mothership comes swooping down, like, then. Like, but that's another thing. Like, even, like, I've never seen it. I would love to. I think it'd be cool, yeah. but I've never seen an alien. I've never even seen anything that I would even consider a UFO. So, man, but I would think it'd be super sweet if a freaking mothership <laughs> came down or a real UFO. Because every video I've seen is the shittiest video ever. That when I see that, I'm like, I'm sorry. That's not enough for me to believe in. Like when I hear stories of they're drinking baby blood and stuff like that, I'm like, man, maybe, but I've just never seen it. Yeah. Like if they're saying, oh my gosh, there's all this human trafficking. Like they just busted a warehouse with a thousand people. It's like, there's no videos. Like where's the proof? Like guess what? Kidnapping and pedophilia. Yes, that stuff has been happening forever. But on the scale that the boob tube, the programming machine is making you think, man, that's tough for me to get my head around, you know? And I guess that's kind of where I'm at is I try to disconnect as much from propaganda as I can because I see that that's their, that's the biggest tool they have in their toolbox. Get into your mind, make you afraid of everything. Because when you're afraid of everything, you'll be willing to just give up all of your liberty. Just keep me safe. I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever. Just keep me safe. That's why, yeah, I mean, that's, and that's why it's like, what are we, what are we grounded in, you know? Because people can just fall for anything. And the old saying, right. if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. And it's just, if, if your hope is in America, you know, it's going to fail you. If your hope's in Biden or, or Trump, it's going to fail you at some point, you know? And, and, uh, you know, moral objective values, like, where do we get them from? Like, where does it come from? Like, where, you know? That's yeah, that's a good qu Yeah, because all of our programming comes from authority figures. Everything, all of your your paradigms, your so your conditioning comes from its learned conditioning. All of it. So it's like, man, if you're not constantly like objectively researching all of those ideals, like it's one of the Ten Commandments. Don't believe in false idols, but it's ideals false ideals like guess what there's no difference in saying i pledge of allegiance to heil hitler there's no difference well in in uh you know putting false idols it's like it anything in the place of of god that's why it's like if, if you know america can be an idol because you can put it in the place of God. I pledge allegiance. Right. Look at those words. I pledge my allegiance. Wouldn't it first be, I pledge my allegiance to God? Yeah. But you're putting America. Like yeah. I tell my son, we don't say that. Yeah. We pledge our allegiance to our friends, to our family, to the people that we love and care about, not to false ideals and false idols. Yeah. So to me, it's like, man, even our kids, like, again, conditioning, repeating Every day, standing up there, hand against your heart. To, I'll die for this ideal. To take a step back to, and just because I've had an out-of-body experience a few times, right? Like, I've had quite a few of them now. Um, one of the things that um, I'd like to, I, I was basically, like, haunted by, and I don't know if it was a demon. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of old hag syndrome. Um, but it's basically sleep paralysis, Right. Um, and I was sleeping in this base. I, I was renting out this guy's basement. Basically, it was two bedroom, bath, kit, full kitchen, like really nice place for five hundred bucks a month um, back in the day. And I remember I kept having these experiences where I would see this old woman and this man with a hat, right? And this guy with the hat and this old hag would suck the life out of me. And well, and I couldn't do anything about it while I was sleeping. And then it kept getting through experiences, it kept getting worse and worse and worse. Um, in fact, one of the times I was in the shower and you know, like I just smoked a fatty blunt and I, I was in the shower and you know, like in your shower, I had this like little mesh deal where I could see out of it. And I was like kind of tripping. I was like, damn, I feel like somebody's watching me, you know? 
So like I was even rinsing my hair with my head back like this so I could keep my eyes open. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I saw this old forehead, like old woman walk by and I tripped, I like opened it up, didn't see anything and like started freaking out. And then uh, I was like, all right, you're just being a wuss. You're super high, you know, like I'm <laughs> like, dude, what is this old woman going to do to you anyways? You know, like right. nothing, right? So like I start, you know, wash my body. I get, I start washing my face. All of a sudden I had this shelf right outside by my window. The shelf by my sink started shaking. Everything started falling out of it. And then my mirror in that, uh, in the bathroom cracked. And dude, I lost it. I ran out to my room butt naked. And I was just reading my Bible like, dude, what the hell? Mm. And so I read all of that, and then uh, it. I kept having weird dreams and of this guy holding me down. Well, the guy I lived with was experiencing kind of the same thing. And I remember one night he went out of his room and just started yelling, leave me alone. It woke me up, and I got out there with him and was yelling with him like, no leave way. us alone. Leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, like whatever, right? And I'm yelling at it. And then uh, – this we on on Tuesday nights we'd play uh, church ball and when we came back we had tacos and his baby mama's friend, uh, who I guess is like a seer or something along those lines, she's like, hey, I don't know what happened in this house or in that basement, but she's like, you guys need to get some sage, you guys need to get this, you know, like you guys need to bless this house because something there's a bad energy, and I kind of tripped out like Abigail, why the hell would you bring your weird ass friend over here? Like, you need to get the hell out. Like I freaked out because I'm like. It started becoming real, right? Like yeah. even more real than it had already been. Uh, and then I remember I was laying down. And I had this dream and I like rolled over and I felt a body laying next to me. And I was like, I kind of like woke up and I was like, who's in my bed? Like kind of like jumped to the corner. And then it was like, oh, it's just your mother. And then I relaxed what? and I laid back down and then I went, what the fuck? Why is my mother in bed with me? And I like tripped out and I hit the iPad next to my bed and this being that was moving quicker than what I could, like I could tell it was moving, but like I couldn't see if that makes sense. Like I couldn't see the form. I couldn't see any of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was moving by the light and I jumped at it like I was going to punch it and I hit the wall and then I turned on the light and I sat there until like four or five in the morning, like you know, shaking basically. And I, then I went to my mom's house and I moved out of that house the next day and I never went back dude, cause it scared the living crap out of me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, you guys know me. I don't like, I don't get scared easy. Right. So it was, it was pretty crazy. And now that I've had since then, I've had an out of body experience. I wonder if like they were from a different dimension or something like that, you know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, like, and I don't necessarily, I, I think that I don't know. Have you guys ever seen Dune? No, the new one. Well, the old, the old one. No, yeah. I haven't. I haven't no. Have you read the book? No. So basically, they move space by standing still, but there's a spice that they collect that actually moves them. Right? What? So they don't. They don't. So it's about like tele. The spice about teleporting and stuff. Cor correct. Yeah. So there's what? this being that you, the magical being that uses this spice to moves you through space. So you don't actually move. You go into this deal and this being moves you. And I think that that is how actual space, because there's no way for, I mean, it would take us 400 years to get to the closest planet that could that you could live off of. Oh, that's right? what I'm saying too. Like, yeah, yeah sending so, a rocket is is a caveman shit. Right. So within the next 50 years, we will develop a technology, light speed, teleportation, something like that. Yeah, and I, th I think that that is the real, because these beings have figured it out, right? They're coming here and feeding off of us or whatever they're doing, because... I uh, looked it up or whatever. You looked There's, up the spice or what'd you look up? No, the old hag syndrome. Because oh, I was just looking up right. old woman, you know, man with a hat. Oh, and so whole, other people have seen. And the hat guy. Hundreds of thousands of people. Like so many people. It's what? insane. Experience the same thing I went through. Yeah. And uh, it, it's crazy to me because I'm thinking maybe these guys have figured out how to... You know, travel? not necessarily the spice, but they know how to travel into our dimension and they're feeding off of, you know, uh, our energy or yeah. whatever it is. Interesting. And 
And I, I think that that is how we're actually going to travel space. Hopefully not in this like demonic way of like feeding off of people or whatever that, that was going on. But gosh, man, I, I haven't experienced it since, right? Since I left that house. So I don't know if that house was like a portal or what, but I definitely went through it. He went through it. And that guy is still, I love him. But he is like drug problems, alcohol problems, like, and he stayed in that house. Interesting. And I think that I was headed down that same path if I stayed in that house because right. she was feeding off me. I got fat while I was in that house. I was drinking all, almost every day, you know, I was doing drugs almost every day and like not, not like weed, you know, I was like mm -hmm. doing Molly and shit all the time. And I, I think it was just that energy she was sucking out of me or... Maybe she was putting that back. I, you know, I don't, I don't know the answers to everything, right? But uh, I definitely feel like I was headed down that same path until I left that house and broke the, the seal or whatever it was. So. Dude, that is wild. What do you guys think about aliens? I mean, I think that they could definitely be real, but I, I think if they, they are real, I, I don't think we would that they're here. I think that I think that most uh, people like. Okay, Demi Lovato is saying she talks to aliens now when she does like mushrooms, I've been mushrooms and stuff like that. I personally believe that you do go to a different dimension or, you know, it's like a TV, you know, you can change, it changes the channel or whatever. Yeah. And I think that she's talking to demons. That's what I believe. And I think that it would only make sense because when aliens talk to people, when they're astral projecting or doing whatever, they're not telling people how to how they got there or about their spaceship <laughs> or what planet they're from they're telling people how to like pray to them or that jesus isn't real or that you know all these different things you know and it's like it's a similar similar experience you know or that they'll you know there's uh also a website where people document their abductions and you know and how they'll go away if they people claim the name of jesus even mm -hmm. non-christians you know, so it's it's pretty interesting to think about, but I don't think the people that are seeing aliens are seeing seeing aliens. You know, I would think I don't know either, but I would think that was probably a demon. You know, yeah, that, yeah, that thing. I actually had an experience myself. Well, I had a, I've had a bunch of experiences growing up, and I had like night terrors when I was little, and obviously it had to do with the abuse of my father. You know, right. I would wa I'd wake up, I would walk around the house just screaming in the middle of the night, just like crying. My mom, my mom, I remember my mom just being like, wake up, wake up, you know? Yeah. And like one time I woke up and the TV was like, you know, and I was like, I believe in Jesus. And it was like, you know, different things like that that's happened my, my whole life. So Are you an like, only child? Uh, no, I have, I have, uh, I actually have five sisters actually, mm -hmm. but and one brother, but uh, you know, they have all their own stories and stuff like that. But the, um, what was I going to say? Oh, well, so one of our, I won't say any names or anything, but one of my friends, one of our friends, uh, known him since seventh grade, he was, um, got really into the QAnon thing, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. I have never even put my foot in that pool. So, <laughs> it got, yeah, it's a I'm deep, there. deep pool. So uh, he would, he got into it and it was just kind of like a, like a man, like a manic thing, you know, like he got into it more and more and more. And it was like, he was just kind of declining and whatnot. But one day, uh, I went to a barbecue, a friend's barbecue, uh, for his wife who graduated, um, school and, uh, to be a doctor or whatever. And he showed up and it was, I was like, Oh my gosh, he looked like he was on meth. And I knew that he doesn't do meth or anything. And I was, I was really worried. And I was like, oh, no. He's just eyes were bulging out. There was something clearly wrong. Well, the next day, I got a phone call from his wife. And uh, me and my fiance were sitting there. Not my wife. But she, I answered the phone. And it was um, his mom, uh, my friend's mom, crying on the phone. And she was like, hey, we got to get over here. He's gone crazy. And he's burning everything in the house. Um, you know, just, he's like saying crazy things and the and I was like, oh, okay, I'll be right over, you know? And, and I really wasn't knowing what to expect. Uh, you know, I was just kind of like, okay, like whatever. I wasn't worried about it. Just like talk him down or whatever this thing mm -hmm. is. And, um, and it reminds me of your story, how you said you walked in that, that you wouldn't, it was like that heat or whatever. Wouldn't you walk in? I, I went 
it, it, I got there and I could hear him like chanting. He was like, ah, la, 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 like saying all these different things. Like speaking in tongues? No, no, no. Like he was like, like cl- clacking. I can't even imitate it, you know? And like he would like sing over and over. And, and anyways, I walked into the door and it was just like this heat wave. I was just like, it was so hot. And I was like, Ugh. like the, and I immediately felt like it was going to puke. And I immediately had no idea what I was going to say and, or do. And I just kind of wanted to get out of there. And his mom and his stepdad were like, we're going to go get the cops, whatever. Like, we're going to leave. We're going to go. And because they won't come here because it's COVID. So we're going to go get the doctor or whatever. And so I was like, you're going to leave me in here? Mm -hmm. I was like, don't leave me alone. (laughs) And I went out. I was like, no, the cops have to come. Like, they have to come when you call them. I'm like, no, no, we got to go. I was like, ah. So I had to go in there. And, you know, uh, thankfully, my wife took out his his kids and played with them on the trampoline and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And his wife was, like, in disarray. She was crying, all those different things. But I went back in there. I was like, okay, I just got to go in here. And I was just like, oh, God, please help me just, just be able to stay in here like give me the strength like tell me no what to say or whatever i was saying this in my head because he was like talking at me blah blah and he was naked completely naked shut up yeah he was in a towel then he was out of a towel what? In a towel, and he was just like Bleh! and he had like all these like he was manic a lot more than that like i'll keep it was it, his eyes were like it was like black soot it was what it was like straight off a movie like, like he was doing like a seance it was like a movie dude what? it was like it was like, like an ex- exorcist exorcist movie what i'm not even joking dude it yeah it, it, it was the craziest day of my life and i was in there for like three hours you were yes and there was all these different things like he wrote in in colored colored crayons q no and it was way like a God, and he know? had like kids yeah, so let me let me see. So, All right. This yeah, is so local. It, it was it was nuts. And he had burned like everything in the house, like the hot sauces, like all these different things. The hot sauce. Yeah, and his and, and his wife had actually told us later that he she thought that he would have probably killed them like later. Yeah. If they would keep going. Dang. But anyways. Um so well, I did and I just heard this side of it too from the source is that um like God had told him that the end of the world was coming, and so he had to kill his family. And he had said that. Like, he told those exact words to me when I saw him over at his house for a fight. And, like, he's like, yeah, it's crazy, but, like, I went through that. He didn't, like, go into detail what Caleb's going in right now, but, like, I've heard it from the source that this all, like, went down. So, so and... We're in the room. I don't know what to say. And I'm just like, and he's telling me all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, what about your kids? Like, you know, and he would, he would be like, I, 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 like, just like a movie. And then he would snap out of it. And he'd look at me. He'd be like, remember in seventh grade in the bathroom when he said we were going to no be No way. Yeah. And he would just, and then he would be like, Whoa. Shh, 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 like, and I was just like, ugh. I was just like, ah. And I was like, okay, let's pray. So we prayed a couple times, whatever. And then he was just like, oh, you know, and I was like, dude, you know, trying to like, console him and you know give him a word of advice or whatever and and then he was talking about how he had met this angel the day before he thought it was an angel and then i was like okay well he told you what and he was like i think it was a demon that i met and he's telling me to do these things and i do these chants and everything and he was all the while leading up to this he was doing what he now knows was divination he was every every name or word had like a number meaning behind it and so he would try to like divine what it meant which is divination which is you know not it says in the bible don't do that because you're messing with you're abusing the supernatural basically and he so he was doing that but um so he said that he met the demon or whatever i was like okay well let's let's pray this and it was like romans 8 or how it says Nothing can come, and I, we both got on the ground. He was naked. I had my hand on his head, <laughs> and and he was like, he was crying. I was crying, and I was just like, Lord, it says in your word that nothing can come between you and the love of Christ. No power, or principality, cosmic power, and, and I pray that whatever is happening to him, whatever is influencing him, whatever is in him, that he would come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. And he before right right after I said Amen, he was like, and he was like. And then he stood up and he was like, Lucifer just came out of me. And he went from dark to light. I'm not joking. And then he was like, oh, I guess I can get dressed now. And he went and got dressed. He what? gave me, he was like, here's a, he gave me his gun. He's like, I probably shouldn't have this right now. And then oh the doctors came. Gosh. And mind you, 
bef- w- when I came there, he was like, his mom was like, Jeremy, why are you? And he'd be like, shut up. And he was like, he was real, you know. And like I said, he went from dark to light, went and got his clothes on. The doctors came and he was like, yeah, I need help. I'm, let's go. I'll come with you. He put on a mask and he's like this QAnon crazy. He was like, he's like, just give me a mask because I drove him to the hospital. He's like, just give me a mask. Yeah. Why no, a mask? Mom. Uh, well, because everybody had to wear a mask for the... Oh, no, was, I thought you meant like a full-on mask. mask, like no, a Jason no. mask, yeah, <laughs> not like, the mask you... Yeah, so I'm just like, that one prayer was just like, boom. And that, I believe that I got filled with the Holy Spirit that day. And that was, that's, I could say all these arguments that I, are faith-building to me for the reasons for Christianity. And I said building because it's not like what my foundation is. And I think that like things like that that have happened in my life where I'm like, Okay, well, I'm going to put all my eggs in that basket because I truly believe it's real. So that's, you know. No, I'm totally with yeah. you. In fact, in fact, I would, t- I totally believe what you're saying. Like, you, your intention was so strong to help your friend that, yeah, you connected to a much higher power. And through your prayer, through your intention, like, yeah, there's things that happen. Like, what did your, was he diagnosed as anything? Well, first of all, he was not any drugs. He was not? No. So he just got the cue. <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah it, he you know it, it was um uh like manic you know whatever like but it, they they even were like schizophrenic or no, i mean no. just manic just, just totally well they said that he has a uh, bipolar disorder but that it, they said it doesn't you know obviously it doesn't explain all that it right was like, you know that's like a step in that direction but it wasn't the whole ladder. But also, like, on. how long had he been going down this QAnon? F- well, for a long out? time, but we're close. In fact, I'll tell you right now, this video will not get any views because we use that word. Uh-oh. Yeah, <laughs> you, that you can't... gets straight up, yeah. dude. No gone, QAnons, huh? dude. Wow. Yeah. It's... So... The guy just had on two days ago. He's big into all this stuff. And he was like, oh, dude, you can't. He's had tons of YouTube channels straight deleted all videos for talking Great Awakening, QAnon. But we're not talking dude. good about QAnon. Even using no. the word. Wow. Oh, dude. Because it's just the algorithm. They yeah. catch it and then they'll... They have voice recognizing artificial intelligence. So they're oh. they're searching all videos. You can't say COVID, any... It picks out those words. If it, if you say that word, shh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No bueno. It's weird. Well, sorry, I messed it up. <laughs> I mean, but uh, it, like even to that point, as, as watching a video, but from these huge freaking marketer guys today saying, like it's so like there is no freedom of speech like online anymore. Like, no. don't think that there is. Like you're fooling yourself. Like yeah. you can't. That's pretty scary, you know. It's just like they decide some tech power decides what we can and cannot hear. You know, it's like. Again, oh, an idol. It's an idol putting yeah. all of our, you know. And, I mean, this is the la- the end days. This is it. Like, we're living in it. Like, it's every week. Every week I'm looking for, what's this, the weird thing that's going to happen this week, you know? It's going to get, it gets darkest before the dawn. Like, it hasn't, man, like, I just posted even on my Instagram, this dude, I guess, that came Monday. I don't, I forgot his name, Charlie something. He's like a Ben Shapiro type. Some guy asked, when do we get to use our guns? Oh, Charlie Kirkham. Yeah. yeah. Charlie and, Kirk. the, and he said, that's what they want you to do. Like, especially in a place like Idaho, like they want you to start something violent so they can bring in the freaking army, take all your guns away. So don't use them, you know. And man, like even with what happened this week at the mall and everything, like, man, I'm, I'm afraid. And I don't use that word emotionally, but logically is that there's going to be more false flag type shit in states like Idaho to try to invoke violence so that mm. they can come in. Cause once that happens, man, yeah, it's, it's going to get crazy. fucking crazy. Yeah. And the crazy thing is too, is like, I have a lot of friends every day that are like, oh, if they come knocking on oh, my door, dude. I'm going to kick their butt. And That's it's like, nine out of ten. Yeah, exactly. But you got to think about it. They're not going to just come with Bob and Sally and be like, hey, how do they do to neighbor? Can I right. have your guns? They're going to put tanks on both sides of your road. Right. And they're going to have trained soldiers coming through and saying, hey, I know you have guns in there. Go get them. And your wife and your kids are going to be in the house. Right. And you're going to go, okay. You know what I mean? No one's going to actually fight at that point, right? right? 
like there you have zero chance of winning and it's not like they're gonna send you a, a letter saying hey friday at six o'clock right. you got two tanks and 15 trained soldiers coming to your house they're just gonna show up right. and you're gonna go fuck you know you can say oh i lost it in a boating accident Easy but they're to gonna tear your right. house apart and so i mean that's here's here's another thing is man my prayer really is and i'm seeing it happen is that as they continue to flex more and more control is people will wake up because remember the military is made of people at what point do those people say i'm not supporting the empire anymore yeah so man that's my prayers man before we get to that point because when that happens it's gonna get that's it's gonna be fucking scary you're not we're not going to work anymore yeah we won't be doing shit like that I, so oh. I always, I back in the day, I always thought to myself, I'm like, how are they going to get the military and the cops to turn on people, right? right? And now it's more clear than ever how they're going to do it, right? Because you if think? you get to the point where the people are shooting at them first, right. as a human, what are you going to do? You're going to protect yourself, right? And they're stirring up such a shit right now that... You know, again, I don't know if you've ever seen RoboCop, but it's exactly what happens in RoboCop, right? Like the the rich elite cause such a stir and such a problem that all of the poor people and all of the regular people are rioting and they're they're now purchasing all of these land for cheap because they burnt down the buildings and they did all of these things, right? So now they're buy, purchasing all these buildings and everyone, the homeless population is increasing. Um, they're creating things to police people that aren't people. They're creating robots and, uh, you know, uh, um, RoboCop basically, right? Mm -hmm. And RoboCop still has a soul and that's why he realizes what's going on and fights, again, fights the man, right? But, you know, we don't we don't have those types of uh, superheroes, basically, right? We don't have that. We have people that are waking up and trying to wake other people up. Right. Uh, and I think that that's the next step, right? It's like other people, we need to like, shake these people and say, hey, you don't have time to right. figure this out. We need you to wake up right now, you know? Yeah. Um, but... Oh. Man, and I told Caleb this, and I, you know, I've obviously told you my last shroom trip. I saw the future, and uh, I don't necessarily know if that was a good thing or not, right? I don't know if what I did was right, and I'm trying to figure that out still. I'm still trying to understand what happened, right? Like, I, I saw the modern earth, and I saw that I was part of the reason, we were part of the reason why the world was waking up. And I don't necessarily know if it was this podcast, right? But, um, you know, there was still an army. There were still cops. There were still firefighters. But their purpose was completely different, right? It wasn't jailing. It wasn't doing all these things. And there was still evil on the earth. But now our concentrated attack was on, right? Like our military wasn't fighting this evil. It was going in and helping clean up after hurricanes. But... Just think about how much better of a world we would live in if these third world countries weren't third world anymore. Right. Uh, you know, 13, it would take what, 11 to $13 billion to stop world hunger. It would take $10 billion to send everybody in the United States to college, right? That, it's crazy. I mean, we spend $770 billion on our military a year. And we've got people that can't even, like, they're going hungry right, in other countries. Man, yeah. You know, and it's... And it's free money. It's all based off of, it's all based off of tension and problems that our governments are creating. I've met tons of Chinese people. None of them want to fight me when I meet them. They right. all want to be my friend. They all, they all want to hang out. They all love being alive. Just None like of us do. want to fight. We all want love and peace and harmony. We all want that. Yeah. But we've been bamboozled. Right. We've been tricked to believe uh, in these false ideals and false idols, you know? Yeah. Oh, man, I'm praying for that future because, man, oh, I got a son too and, man, he is my world and man, I don't want him to grow up in a bad world, you know? Well, and I don't want anybody 
man, I'm, I want everybody to be happy and we can love each other. Like not to be like a hippie or anything, but it's not hard, you know, it's not. Well, man, one thing that he brought up to me that like, you know, hit me hard, like made me think about this, right, is Hitler and all of these evil people, right? They wanted a Mecca as well, right? They wanted this perfect world. And all of them said the same thing that I just experienced is that somebody was telling me I had something to do with this perfect Mecca, this perfect world, and how to create it, right? It wasn't, through me, it wasn't telling me war, but who's to say it's, you know, the next time I see or hear or see the future, it's not going to tell me through war that mm -hmm. I can that I can create this Mecca, right? So, well, well because if that's not your if it, it, because because maybe it, because I've had the I've had the similar vision, mm -hmm. and so man, like if if your heart isn't like you're you're not Hitler, right. and your programming, your upbringing, like your paradigm is not the same as his. So whereas hey, maybe it is our job, maybe it is our destiny to help bring the earth and the people on earth into a better future maybe it is you know mm -hmm. so maybe that just like hey i had a vision in 2006 similar vision and so ever since then like my life like that has been impressed on my heart and at, the farther along i get the more i'm focused on that like i teach a class every every saturday and the majority of all of my students are in india philippines like so it's like hey we live in a world with the internet like we can like people are going to watch this podcast they're going to get something out of it like yeah if we continue to do it and trying to wake people up and spreading this message both in our in our own communities and all around the world like it could spread you know like, we don't know what will happen, but man, like, especially after talking about like, man, I want to be more for trying to spread peace and love than trying to spread fear and anger, you know, gosh, dang it. Cause man, like, I don't want to have to kill someone. I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to watch people around me die. Like, man, it will suck, man. Oh my gosh. It will suck. Jesus said that, uh, my kingdom is not of this world right so when you know and half the world is in captive countries and most of those countries if not all of them were brought about the captive governments in whatever form were brought about by people who were trying to make a utopia who don't believe in god or you know <clears throat> you know they say there is no god we can make a utopia like in in china they their church their state-run churches, they don't allow the teachings of Jesus' resurrection or the teachings of heaven because they don't want people to imagine a place better than China, you know, because they want their... Oh, faith. my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's... I want to go the right place. Like, I can imagine, you know, I want to re lead him in the right way, honestly, truly, you know. And I, re I really, truly, truly believe that's the right way, but I don't know. What I was going. Sorry for the tangent. No, it's a good one. Um... There's no talk of like a utopia or a golden age or anything like that after the second coming. Uh, well, he said there's a new heaven and a new earth that all everything will be burned up. You know, which that's what science tells us too. And in Isaiah, it says that God stretches out the heavens like He does a tent, which we know the universe is being stretched out like continuously, and eventually will end in the great heat death. You know, it's just God burning it up. You know, and and. Um, casting the devil and all of his minions into the lake of fire, you know, and then we're, you know, good to go forever. <laughs> <laughs> There's no suffering at that point. I'm looking forward to that, you know. Um, Interesting. Well, all right, guys, that was pretty good. <laughs> nice. Well, I hope somebody does hear this because I feel like that was a lot of information. That was, man. That was good. That was deep. Yeah. I appreciate you guys coming. Thanks yeah. for having me here. Yeah, have a good time. Appreciate it. Man. Always have good conversations with both of you guys. Yeah. Glad you guys got to have a good conversation together. Now. Yeah, me too. Me too for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely. Dang. Oh. Right on. Uh, so, you married? Yeah. Any more kids? Yeah, I got one on the way. I got Maybe another you? son on the way, yeah. Nice. Yeah, one. yeah. 
Um, January sixth. Oh man, so just a couple months. Yes. Oh man, I would I would have a million kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm pretty excited really about it. So I think it's the best part of life, you know, for sure. Being I think so too, man. Like you said, is like once once you have a child, or at least I once I had a child, my my purpose for living completely changed and continues to completely change. Like you said, is I'm inspired to constantly work on becoming a better person, a better example for him. Like I made him get into jujitsu and I got into jujitsu too, because I'm not going to make you do something if I'm not doing it myself, you know? So doing those things, like I make him, he gets up at 7 a.m., does push-ups every morning, do, does these things. How old is he? Six. Six, that's awesome. And so like that's I'm awesome. doing them with him, you know? Like, so like he said, like it's just a whole nother level of purpose and love, you know? Yeah, nothing yeah. unmatchable. Oh yeah, nothing. Nothing like that. Uh. Well, Enjoy your Hallow's Eve, bro. What are you guys doing for Halloween? Uh, I'm going to my friend Kevin's house, which I do every year. Nice. Uh, if you would like to come, open invitation. It should be pretty On fun. Halloween? Saturday, Saturday night. We'll see. We have a, a party at our Jiu Jitsu gym. Uh -huh. Halloween party. So, is our kids going to too? No. Uh, I'm not. Well, I might be getting, no, 